Jun Tani, notre invité de Okinawa, Japon, a reçu son doctorat de l'Université Sofia de Tokyo en 1995. Il a commencé sa carrière de, de chercheur au laboratoire d'informatique de Sony en 1993. Il est devenu chef d'équipe du laboratoire pour le comportement à la cognition, euh, et la cognition dynamique à l'Institut de recherche sur le cerveau Riken, Riken à Saitama, Japon, en 2001. Puis ensuite, il est devenu professeur ordinaire du département de génie électrique de l'Institut avancé de la science euh, et la technologie à Daejeon, Corée, en euh, Corée du Sud, en 2012. Do you speak Korean, uh, June? No, I didn't remember. I didn't learn Korean so much. So that's why I came back to Japan. So, so, so when you when you when you uh, when you were there, do people understand J Japanese? No, 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 no. No, Kaist is everything is English. So ah, English so schools, yeah. The yeah. default option, yeah. Donc uh, en Corée du Sud, il est actuellement um, professeur ordinaire à l'Institut des sciences et technologies d'Okinawa uh, au Japon. Ses intérêts de recherche comportent les neurosciences cognitives, la psychologie du dé développement, la phénoménologie, les systèmes adaptifs complexes et la robotique. Donc, tous les thèmes qui sont couverts dans, dans, cette, cette, théorie, euh, dans cette série. Et puis, son, euh, sa, sa présentation sera sur l ex une exploration du mental chez les robots. Uh, I'll say it, uh, I'll introduce you quickly in, in, in English as yeah, well. Yeah. Yes. Everybody has seen the introduction, so we know that you are uh, from <laughs> Okinawa Institute uh, of Technology, and your research institutes uh, include, in interests include cognitive neuroscience, developmental psychology, phenomenology, complex adaptive systems, and robotics. And your talk will be on exploring robot minds. Professor Tani has requested that uh, if you have a question, an urgent question, you should put it in the chat. And if I agree that it's urgent, I'll transmit it to him. But in general, he prefers to go to the end before taking questions uh, of uh, substance and discussion. And with that, uh, ça, ça me fait plaisir de présenter Professor Tani. Professor Tani. Yeah, yeah, Stephen, thank you very much for your kind introduction. And actually, this is the second time to uh, give a talk in a Stevens laboratory. That was actually 1994, I remember, 1993. So, but, uh, but uh, it's uh, ph philosophically, the talk will be kind of uh, same or uh, similar in, in, uh, compared to 25 years, my talk. So, but uh, some development. So, so today I talk about it. Uh, just wait. So it's not controlling this. Okay. Okay. So yeah, today I like to talk about the title: exploring robotic minds using predict coding and active inference frameworks. So, and uh, just a small advertisement. In uh, I published my robotics book for exploring robotic minds in uh, five years ago. So uh, June. Uh, June. Yes. The, your your microphone is sometimes going soft and loud. Can, can, is, is there a connection problem? Yeah, that, that looks like, a, is that so often or? Yeah, it, it, it wasn't happening before, but now it's going like this and then it gets very quiet and then it gets yeah, loud. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, it sometimes happens and I still cannot figure out. So in uh, maybe something related to the computer power, it's, uh, yeah, if I start opening the slide, then this happens, so. No. Oh, interesting. Now it's not okay, it doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. So now I fix the mic, then it might be late. So I could not solve yet, so I'm sorry about it. So, yeah, okay. Okay, so then my talk today is, uh, yeah, first, I like to briefly introduce the idea of predict coding and active inference. And then, and then I am uh, using that framework, using the, our recent model, neural network model, and I'm going to show you some experiments on social interaction using two robots. 
then and then that's why I'm gonna discuss about mirror neuron things and uh, intentions about this also. And uh, next uh, experiment I'm gonna show is uh, about goal directed planning based on the active inference. And then especially we focus on the manipulation of a visual imagery for generating a goal directed plan. Now, especially using the visual working memory and the visual attention. So that's kind of thing. And then finally, I like to discuss uh, symbol grounding program in, 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 uh, based on our robotics experiments. And then I like to discuss my thinking about phenomenological consciousness. So that is today's main. So let's go by the predict coding active inference first. So, and then predict coding is a theory for the perception. And usually we think that uh, we have a predictive model. And then the actual process of the perception is considered to minimizing the error between the top-down sensory prediction and its bottom-up outcome by influencing the latent state or internal state. So, and the active inference is solely for the action generation. And this is again, try to minimize prediction error by changing sensory inputs by adequately acting on the environment. So that is a, these two are not separated process, you know, as action and the perception make a loop through the environment. So now I like to provide you more intuitive picture about explaining these two framework. Now, we have worked on relatively long time in the models analogous to the predict coding the active inference. So, uh, then especially we use recurrent neural network and then that one hierarchically organized. So that looks like this one. Then we have, this is a recurrent neural network, but uh, it's kind of a, this is a slow component and time scale is slow and it may be associated with cortex. The we are branching for the, this one is a proprioception. This one is a vision things. And we have some kind of a hierarchy and the lower levels operated in a fast time constant. So then we have environment. And uh, we may have some kind of intention of uh, intending to act environment to and then that intention have a, is going to generate a top-down prediction about the both channel of proprioception and the visual sensation about a sense about sensation. So, and then this proprioception means predicting next proprioception, next body posture means that the prediction of the joint angle of the robot for next time step. That one is fed into the something called PID controller, motor controller, and that generating the motor torque and the acting on the environment, the causing the state change in the environment and the generating new sensation with perception and vision. Then we have a prediction here and the actual outcome comes here that we have the error and the error is again used to the regulating the control. The further error is bottom up both channels for in order to updating, in order to update intention for minimizing the error here. So that is something like a um, perception side that is uh, changing the internal state by, so by that. Coding, but also we have a changing. So this is acting in the environment, changing the world by the active inference. So both sides change the subjective mind, the objective world. Then we have a dense interaction between these two. So that is kind of a coupling of a perception and the action generation. Then, however, uh, the, this. We have worked a relatively uh, long time for the determ only deterministic model. Recurrent neural network is a conventionally deterministic model. 
and the no probabilistic treatment. And then I consider the question is that uh, are there any way to bridge the gap between these two uh, discipline of uh, deterministic modeling and probabilistic modeling? Then I thought that the free energy immunization might be the answer after I uh, discussed with Kristen in a few years ago. So based on this thinking, we, we developed something called predict coding inspired uh, by uh, an, uh, variational recurrent neural network model. Okay, so, and then that one is, is So it's try to minimize free energy and the free energy represented like a summation of the two terms, this is free energy. So then that is one is maximizing accuracy, that is minimizing prediction error. And uh, on the other side, we have a minimizing complexity that is, uh, okay, I will explain later, but that is minimizing care divergence between the posterior and the prior. And this one is weighted by some parameter called metaplier. I will explain about this parameter later. Anyway, so we're gonna, you know, minimizing the free energy represented by this one. So, so maximizing accuracy and minimizing complexity. So that one is implemented to the A recurrent neural network, more variational recurrent neural network model. I'm going to explain that how it works in a using graphical representation, uh, especially uh, explaining about the function of this network as a online prediction with the inference of the past based on the prior learning. So this is time development, time develops in this way. And this is kind of Z is a prob probabilistic latent variable internal states. And this takes a form of uh, something called sequence Gaussian prior that is kind of having predicting, estimating for the future with Gaussian distribution of the latent states. So this is each step for we have prior. But the prior comes in a sequence. So how it's generated, I'm going to explain. So this one is actually in the fed each time fed into the deterministic latent variable. This is deterministic one, D, each step, and it goes predicting next uh, uh, prior things and the coming. So this way, so this one is the father uh, is going to generate the prediction of the proprioception and vision. X is a sensation prediction. Then we will have a, we're gonna have a, observations, actual sensation comes in terms of proprioception and the vision. So then we may have a prediction error. Then that is bottom up or back propagates through time. Then so as to infer the appropriate posterior. This red one is posterior, blue one is flyer. Then what the free energy minimization asking try to minimize both prediction error, prediction error here, and uh, uh, care divergence between the uh, posterior and the prior. So the shape of these things should become similar. That is to minimize free energy. So what we do is try to make the system straight to the, and the coming, straight with uh, sensory sequence already experienced, sensory sequence coming, and then, um, in latent state is situated to these observation based on free energy immunization. So that is an iterative process. Each sensory step, we have to iterate for inferring the latent state of these things. So once the system is uh, situated, then we can make a nice, uh, good prediction. So for the future, one step future, this one, So, and then we call this is a post prediction, maybe, and then this is a prediction. So these two things goes together. 
So let's look at the hierarchical organization. Okay, so we would. Okay, so, and this is a higher level, slowly operated. So the so time constant is larger. This one is more fastly operated, time constant is smaller. So then we have a, so this is a learning process. So we have a, a kind of prediction, forward dynamics prediction and from the higher levels to the lower level. And then the prediction goes a long time. Then we have sensory outcome. And this red one is a backdrop, error backdrop from the lower level to higher level, the backward in time for the for 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 updating the the posterior at each time step and each layer. So and then so and the actual learning is have to do two things. That is kind of uh, optimizing the uh, posterior and at each time step in each layer and also synaptic weights. Synaptic weights have to be optimized. That is the learning process. Then after the learning process, we do something, we do online, online computation of prediction of prediction. So that is, we, we have a, a top down prediction and the bottom up things. And once system is created, then we're gonna predict the next sensory, next sensory sensation. And then we go, it shifts, time shifted. So we have kind of a window. So this is kind of the window of the post-prediction for minimizing free energy. And then this window is shifted after the iteration of computation. We usually do like a 100 millistep, millistep cycle. The reason 100 millisteps, we have to do the hundreds of uh, uh, iteration of uh, and, uh, uh, forward and back back processing. So that's a lot of computations necessary. So, okay, so okay, so then the, uh, using this model and doing many robotics experiment learning experiments, the, what we found is that the different structures get self organized depending on the setting of the W. W is this weightening for the complexity term metaplier. So what we found is something like this. So we have a fractured spatial temporal pattern, usually robot pattern, robot passive sensation with a very fractured one. If we set W is larger, it looks like it's fractured temporal pattern is embedded in a deterministic chaotic dynamics. This, if this is not fractured, it's kind of completely deterministic. It's not chaotic necessary, but it's fractured and probabilistic, seeming probabilistic, and the chaos comes. So, and then on the other hand, we set W is very small, then stoch it's, it will be embedded in a stochastic dynamics. So that is so that is an interesting thing that if we observe seemingly probabilistic. But it could be either deterministic, it could be, or stochastic. But that is depends on interpretation or depends on the parameter in my model W. So, and then this, uh, the, this difference causes something like this. So that is, so with larger W, we get the deterministic model. That means that the flyer is very, with a, it comes with a very thin uh, sigma, and in a, in a, in a, in a sigma is very small. That is, a, it's called high precision flyer. So then that's deterministic. Then it goes to have a strong top-down belief. It's no stochasticity or no um, no probabilistic uh, estimate. So that is very strong top-down, like a steel. So it's very initial sensitive, but once initial state is given, it doesn't change. So, okay, so then that means that the strong sense of the agency, so that means that the, uh, strong congruence between what is intended and its perceptual outcome. So that's strong congruence between. So, and if we set W is uh, smaller, 
the other way around the commons. So, okay, so now, and, and I have to say in, in the course of the learning, actually these two extremes is not necessarily good. And, uh, and the best generalization comes in the between. So in the case of the learning. So actually this is, I would say overfitting. This is too much random. So that's kind of thing. Okay, so then the, I'm gonna show you kind of experiment using this uh, model. It's a synchronous, that's a synchronized imitative interaction. The robots is uh, synchronizedly try to imitate based on prior learning. So two robots, okay. So, and then that one is that the two robots are pre-trained for generating the predicting sequence of the primitive patterns, which follow a specific probabilistic finite set of I will explain that a little bit more. So anyway, so the robot is kind of a try to, like a learning is a powerful, like a, in, a, in, a, in a standing in front of the mirror, each robot. And then I do like this, and then I see the sensation of my how my hand moving, right? So then that is kind of as a motor part, or maybe it's a learning to predict motor part of the how it goes, how it should be to generate this one, the proper joint angle of the arm, the how I see, you know, she can the visual things of the hand moving. So that's kind of associated, right? So that's kind of sequence robot have to run for each robot, robot run. So, okay. And then once run, it becomes able to predict that sequence. That means that the, while anticipating the sensation of this one and then the, the generating the action in terms of generating proprioceptive sequence. So. And uh, I will say that uh, this is following the probabilistic finance machine that is, uh, so it's like uh, after I do like this one, then I do this or I do like this, that's kind of probabilistic. So we call primitive, primitive movement, right? So each one, and then that comes in a sequence in the following some kind of uh, rules, but it's probabilistic sequential rules. That's called probabilistic finance machine. The training is conducted with a setting with a different W value for the boss robot. That's looking at the effect of the W multiplier. Then after the pre training, two robots interact by generating own intended movement pattern while predicting pattern generated by the other based on the learning. So that is a framework. So each robot try to minimize free energy during the learning as well as during during the interaction time. Okay, so we have a two robots here. Robot one. So this is kind of a progress finance state machine. So both robots first, it's kind of a synchronous synchronously generated primitive A, like this one. Then it's followed by this robot preferred C primitive more than B. So 80%, 10%. B. Robot two is, is preferred to generate B rather than C. That is a difference. So then the so both robots predicting the prior generation for the both channels. Then vision is vision prediction is generated. So and the proprioception in terms of joint angle generated and fed into the PID controller, actually movement is generated, physical movement and body kinematics. And that goes, and then that is, is, is a vision sensation for this robot. So because it moves, the vision sensation comes. And then this robot also prior uh, generation prediction for the vision also and uh, generating the movement through the controller post, uh, and then we have a kind of the error so this robot is predicting how these things come but uh, sometimes we have the error error propagating bottom up manner and changing the intention that's posterior update and also this robot inside this robot is also the posterior update. So that is kind of, and then we looping, looping. So, and then that is a true robots 
while generating own behavior and predicting the other. So perceiving. So perceiving the other and generate your own behavior. So that it goes in cycle. So specific question in this uh, setting is like, uh, so is that what sorts of interaction can emerge? Do they always imitate each other synchronously or do they sometimes generate their own intended movement by ignoring the other? So this is something like a question about the mirror neurons. I used to open the mirror neuron. That is somebody else, the counterpart is showing something like this. The proper function mirror neuron is my, this robot is imitating. But the question is that are we always imitating always? No, right? So sometimes we do our own intended behavior, ignoring the other, but how these things come? So sometimes mirroring, sometimes we uh, imitating. So uh, uh, no, mirroring sometimes, but is a, uh, own intention is generated in all intended behavior, ignoring other. So that's kind of things uh, I like to discuss. So how does the strength of that related to the sense of the agency, but how does the strength of sense of agency of each robot possibly churned by the test setting of W affect the way of dialectic interaction? So that's a strong sense of agency, weak sense of agency. The way of interaction depends on that one. Should depend on that one. So maybe so now we look at robotics experiments. Okay, so now you see the two robots interacting. Uh, and then this is this robot is B that's set to his high W. This robot is set with a low W. Okay, so this is what I'm showing. I'm gonna show you this one. This is a prediction. So this is now is here. So it's not so clear, but now is here. This is a predicting for the future things. So both the same. So it's a predict future. And and then so and here is something like a past and the past window or post prediction window. So that is this part is also dynamically changing. So, so let's see the role, how it goes. So this robot is high W, this robot is a low W. So therefore, now they are doing A, now doing the B. So this robot prepared B. This robot is following this guy. So because the small W. So now is A. So and this robot is stably generating future for the prediction of future. And the reality agrees with this prediction, but uh, this robot is very unstable with prediction and the reality is betrayed always. The prediction betrayed by the reality. This is uh, in a post-diction window. So. so then now we are setting both robot to have a high W. So then now, so now, two robots doing A synchronously. However, when this robot wants to do the B, this robot is doing C. That is a kind of a ignoring each other. So A, a state is okay because uh, both robots run to do A, but after that, this robot is prepared to do, do the B. And this, so this is kind of intent. Ah, okay. So, so it's, uh, yeah, this robot both are stably predicting future and the and the reality comes as intended. Both robots is kind of a, what is the intention comes to, to the reality. So this is a setting that both W is very small. The past is prediction future very unstable. So now is a state B or C is kind of confusing, but it looks like following and the A is okay. So both are doing A. Then that coming to the B or C, so that is kind of a unstable struggling. So that kind of things come, so came in a experiment. Okay, so I'm back to this one. So, uh, 
Uh, okay, so maybe Edward, I show you a little bit about uh, this plot. This is robot one and robot two, the small W, high W. So then you see that uh, this is kind of a, in a, in a, okay, so it's, it's generating the pattern that is un uh, more unstable for the robot one, but more stable. And then it's a, uh, so this is latent states, random latent states in the Z of the high and the lower level, more higher uh, fast, right? Almost synchronizing with this behavior things. And this is something higher level latent state. So that is kind of slow, time scale is slow, that's why. So that is, this one is encoding like a, a sequence of the primitive scenario. And this one is a detail of the movement, something like that. And then you see that this is a, is a yellow one and the black one. There is some discrepancy. That is KL divergence. That is discrepancy, discrepancy is KL divergence. So because this robot set with W is very small, less constraint of KL divergence. Therefore, it's gonna be something like a reality. I mean, the posterior and the prior, we have a gap. But this one, because W is very high, Posterior and prior has no gap. So that is a difference. Then that's so. Okay, so then we, we look at the, uh, that uh, in, uh, this is uh, an, uh, low W, this is a high W robots and generating the pattern. So now this robot, low, low W robot is predicting like this C is predicting. Now is here. And then this is after A. Then the, and then this this high W robot predicting B, and uh, so then as time goes by, a little bit more steps, and then now this robot is kind of a is a, now is here proceeding the time, and now actually the the B is coming, not C. So it's intended to C, but adapt to the this robot. So so it's a high W three point four. And then this robot is generating his own preferred pattern of B, then this robot adapting to that one. So, okay, so, and then what we see is like a, a robot with large W leads the other with the small W. And uh, synchronized imitation is more frequently when robot with larger W and smaller W in them. That is, this is kind of a set W is large and small. In that case, the synchronization rate is uh, uh, the highest compared to the other situation. So, so then that when both robots are set with larger W, they ignore each other movement. So it's a picture is something like this. That is the intuitive picture. So it's going on. So. Then when this robot is set with small W, and this robot is set with large W, let's do it too. So then the, and now what do we see? This is set with large W. And then as I told you, it's gonna develop with a high precision flyer. So this probably is distribution of latent state. Uh, so, and then that is why posterior Follows of this strong prior, ignoring the sensation from the other. If we set the W with a small and then um, this kind of low precision prior developed, and then in that case is that the posterior follows sensation, ignoring the prior, that is uh, following the other, ignoring own intention. That's why this robot becomes a leader with large W. This robot with small W becomes follower. So that is kind of a, uh, the mechanism between these two. Okay, so, and then we do in kind of a human robot interaction using same model. And uh, we might show some video.
So this human robot is equipped with a force feedback control. And now Henry, this person is, a, is, a, is a feeling the sense of the intentional robot by physically interacting, pushing the pulling each other. So the feeling, the intention of this robot. This robot is trained with large high W and this robot trained with a low W. That's why Henry have difficult time of manipulating this robot. This case, this robot is more flexible because of low W. When we set W intermediate value and Henry and the robot is nicely interacting, sharing the patterns between synchronized very much. Okay, this is other robots, so I'll stop here. Uh, okay, so, uh, So the point is something like this one. It's uh, like, uh, so by using this variation recurrent network and then the so week and the using uh, implemented in this uh, uh, hardware, the so robots, and then we can feel intention of the robots in our hands by means of the uh, embodied interaction, physical interaction through the free energy principle implementation. So that is a uh, uh, things we can show. Okay. So then uh, uh, now we go to the next robotic experiments of uh, uh, a go direct planning of a vision based robot using the active inference. Okay. So then that is the idea of a go direct planning that uh, so this is arm type robot and uh, this is kind of initial block configuration randomly located in red, blue, green blocks. And then goal is given to this robot like this. So this is a configuration a robot is given with this goal is visually and robot have to achieve this one starting from this one. The robot mentally generate the visual visual perceptive sequence of achieving this one. So this is kind of a mental imagery generated. So, and for the different goal like this one or this one, a different a visual perceptive sequence should be generated. And then this can be done after good training. So the goal direct planning can be done after a good learning of set of tutored experience about manipulating the objects. So we tutor the robot many way of acting on a block, like a, a grasping and then, and then uh, placing it on uh, some particular block or making tower in a many different ways. We, we made a kind of 300 trajectory of tutoring for and then after that, we provide some kind of a new un un unexperienced goal, goal configuration like this one. Then robots ask to, to generate by planning. So planning the, the visual perceptive sequence. So that is a task. So, and the focus is that one is that goal like planning by active inference framework. So planning in the latent space instead of the motor space and the uh, development of visual attention, the visual working memory through the self-organization. So that is, we don't to teach explicitly what to attend, what to look at, and then what to memorize, what to retrieve from the working memory, but rather those same functions of self -organization. And uh, we are going to report some uh, interesting phenomena found in robotics experiments conducted in our laboratory. Okay, first explain go direct planning by uh, the uh, active inference. So this is again higher, middle, and lower net in the uh, year, and this is a prediction of visual perceptive sequence. And this is a time. And then we have uh, this time is a latent random variable only for the initial states. So that's simplification a little bit. And after that is going to be deterministic transition, no sigma. So only initial state have uh, this kind of things and uh, mean and sigma. And we have a uh, unit Gaussian flyer 
So that is, this is going to be more like in it Gaussian if we don't put any pressure. So, uh, so that is prior. So the based on the prior and then state transition and latent state and, gener and uh, generated, and then that's the generating visual process sequence. Then we will provide after good learning, that means that the connectivity weight is well established. And then we're gonna provide the goal image by the vision. So like I have shown and the block the configuration that means. And this has to be achieved sometime in the terminal steps. Then this prediction we have, and this has to be kind of error minimized. And then also, the, we, the robot is fast before moving, already uh, seeing the, 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 the configuration. So therefore, then that is the visual sensation coming already in initial state. Then that have to be deconstructed also, the error is here. So then these error have to be minimized through the back propagating, through the layer and the time, and then Try and then that is kind of minimizing this error and then searching for the best value for the initial states of this one in the Latin, random Latin variable by minimizing something called expected free energy because for the future it's called expected free energy. So that's error minimized here, goal part, and this one will also minimize. And also have to be, this one is constrained more for unit Gaussian. So then care divergence have to be minimized. So, so that is a planning process. So in searching for this one, and, and then if you got the minimizing, then hopefully that nice visual process sequence generated, that one is um, bring us to the nice goal, goal, position, goal image. So that is the idea. So that is a kind of a, you know, iterative computation we need. The incorporated is a back propagation through time. Okay, so then, then the, 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 the one thing is that such space is confined in a vector space of initial state. So not motor space, usually planning is done in the motor space, but we do the initial states of this one. And, and then the variable is a less, number of variables more limited. So, and also the such space is confined in a space of well habitual. That is a, in the learning phase, robot is kind of a tutor for the, some habituated behavior. Therefore, planning is also, is not planning, not all possible space of the moving. That's based on habituated everyday behavior, but, but a combined in a different way. That is something like idea of, the, again, primitive in a lower level. And the combination of them is coming to the upper level. The print here is kind of a approaching the uh, and, uh, broke and uh, grasping and the placing or something like that. So, okay. Okay, so then, and then now I come to a little bit complicated part that's development of visual attention, visual working memory for visual, visual goal type planning. Uh, basically, that is the idea. That our model is inspired by the draw and the Google in uh, London, the so Grego developed, and uh, and um, development of visual attention mechanism. That is uh, learning where to attend and when in an un, in an unsupervised manner. And uh, also another one is development of adequate use of visual working memory learning what to read and write in a working memory in what timing in unsupervised manner. So, so top down, so now I'm gonna explain the scheme a little bit using graphical model again. So we have a kind of LSTM that is a recurrent network, kind of a, yeah, recent recurrent network everybody's using and then providing current visual inputs. And the system has to generate both uh, proprioception and the vision for next time step and the future. But now I'm more focused on the vision part. So the LS team is going to predict. 
small size of peripheral vision, that is 32 by 32, that is uh, more smaller than compared to original one. And also, at the same time, predicting in a visual image of the attended part with generating attention vector or where, where to attend and then with what kind of scaling. So that is attention vector. So together, and then these two things predicted, and that is kind of a, we're gonna in, uh, march in uh, prediction of PV of this uh, peripheral vision and central vision is kind of a merged using this uh, attention vector. So for, so this is a uh, yeah, merged one for prediction next time step. And further we do, we have a uh, here working memory. And then this is kind of storing the previous uh, image, but uh, some part we're gonna overwrite using this information, new information, new prediction here. Then that is we're gonna kind of a mask generated by LSTM, and the mask is changing always, all time, temporary. And but it's now the masking like this guy is saying that mask this part, and then that, and then this working memory, this part is kind of rewritten, so overwritten. So this image comes to here. So but this part is the same. So that the image saved in the working memory is updated partially with the image in the right panel using the predicted mask by LSTM. So that's a little bit complicated, but again, further complication. So we're gonna, again, another type of the mask, mask here and the mask here, and then this part, using this part, and then final prediction of visual things come. So then this is, is uh, most uh, the, uh, try to be the best prediction here for the next time step, receiving the current input, visual input. So uh, this all these mechanism like uh, in uh, assigning the mask or uh, at each time step visual attention, those mechanisms can be self-organized by means of a synaptic change in the network with the prediction error minimization principle. Um, uh, so but this is possible because whole network is designed to be differentiable. So differentiable. So that's why it's the error can propagate. So I'm gonna show you the more global picture and a little bit complicated, but uh, this is a higher level, executive level, some kind of a stack of the LSTM. This one is going to generate to the one the peripheral vision of a small size, as I told you, and the central vision attended part with associated with attention vector. And this is a proprioception joint angle of the next time step and uh, different types of the mask things is predicted. So, and then, and, and all the business goes on, then that is kind of causal chain starting from the, the actual start, Starting for the initial intention state, and that generates the activity of a recurrent network sequence. Then that is generating peripheral vision and central vision, the attention vector, and the, the mask things. That is kind of combined. Then we have a prediction of vision and a proprioception thing. We have an actual reality of this one and the outcome, and we're gonna have the error. The error goes back, going in the inversely, inversely through the causal chain and try to optimize this internal state. So the learning case, we're gonna optimize uh, the connectivity weights also. But after the learning connectivity weight is fixed, only the internal state is up to date so as to so the, this uh, the future provided specified goal image and the error propagating them uh, through the causal chain, through the time steps and the interest states updates to the minimization. That is uh, things to do. Okay, now I come to the explain robotics experiments we have done. So now robots provide, uh, this is after the learning, good learning. And then uh, uh, these block is located randomly. 
And the robot is asked, this is a goal image. Robot is shown with this goal image, pixel image. Now I'm gonna show you the, what kind of a uh, vision plan, vision, vi, visual sequence generate for achieving the goal. So fast stuck on the green, green and red. Yeah, that is actually, this is not the real one, but it's kind of a robot mentally image for the achieving this goal. Now we look at the attention and the focus of the robot. So robot look like is attending to the object to be grasped, right? That's very natural. Then next one is really interesting. That is about working memory, visual working memory, visual working pad. What kind of things are written and what kind of things is the read read from the so is this interesting? So it's kind of the so what do we see that we don't see that robot movement at all. What we see is that uh, the result of each action, so like, uh, and the kind of a sequence of a static uh, visual information, visual image, start uh, shot, uh, snapshot, snapshot, right? Snapshot sequence comes first is that uh, the, all the same, uh, the, uh, the visual configuration and the, uh, and the green comes and the red comes, but we don't see the movements, right? So that is kind of looks like showing kind of sub goal, reaching to the final goal. So that should be interesting. And finally, this is a physical execution of the robots the movement. So yeah, successful in this case. Sometimes this case. Okay, so the emergence things, interesting things finding is that this one. So that is a, this is a goal and this is starting and this is a visual image, visual sensation. So then sometimes the object is a block is occluded. However, this is a visual working memory associated. And what we see is that this is kind of static, doesn't change. And then therefore, we see the behind the object here. So because uh, it's not occluded. So that is, uh, it means that the robot looks like understanding kind of uh, if the object is not moved or attached, acted, then they, they stay there. So that is the object permanency things, things comes. And also this part is, as I told you, kind of uh, sub goal things representation, this this first one, this second uh, the sub goal, and this final goal things come. So, so that it looks like understanding of object permanency was uh, developed the learning of many, many situations. And another one is something like that because robot in this working memory and the robot is not moving, that is kind of sensory attenuation for self-generated action was developed. That is kind of corresponds to the cognitive neuroscience study like Blackmore, Blakemore and other people. So that's kind of things we didn't expect something like this happen. We just saw that what will happen if we put to the visual working memory and then this kind appear so that um, kind of emergent finding so okay and the performance comparison yeah that is a uh, is a uh, is, uh, is many com and different combination like a uh, non-variational determinist is a working memory or variational but without working memory but the best is that uh, variational that is the uh, initial state is provided with a random variable of mean and sigma the deterministic one is only me, I mean, no sigma, but it is over, this is the best. The wizard working memory is not so big difference, but the wizard working memory is gonna be good. So without working memory, still robot can do because we have a LSTM. LSTM can recurrent loop, you can store the information, but is using visual working memory. That one is more direct, easy to use. So that's why the higher level starts to utilize working memory. So 
That is interesting. Recently, we are using kind of a two type of visual working memory. More interesting story comes, but I don't have time to explain about that. So first working memory and the second visual working memory. So it's like a prefrontal uh, parietal or something like that, maybe. Okay, so, and also we are working on a reinforcement learning version for, uh, but a more simplified simplify their setting, but it will be coming soon. So uh, we, we did this time, you know, is a is kind of a supervised learning, but now we are doing the also reinforced learning problem also can be applied. So now I come to the discussion session. So the first things I like to discuss is that because Stephen Harnard raised, so I like to discuss again symbol grounded program, as like I did 25 years ago. <laughs> And then, and then, and then, and then, and then I like to give my own account, maybe mistaken, because this difficult problem, but the phenomenological consciousness. Okay, so uh, first, the simple grounding problem. So uh, Stephen Hanna discussed the 19, 1990. So, and then the argument is something like that. So we have a sensory motor pattern and that, that is very analog and metric space, having metric space. And then we prepare a nice categorizer, then higher level can have only kind of a, this kind of symbolic representation, finite state machine. So in the symbols, that is kind of is a primitive one primitive two, primitive three. And then if this comes as a proper risk, like uh, my experiment of intelligent interaction, it's kind of a, it's a higher level looking only this kind of a uh, and, uh, transition of the label, the symbols. So, so then that is, uh, yeah, in this way, this kind of a representation, abstract representation by symbol could be grounded uh, using nice categorizers. So that is, uh, of course, is, uh, in, uh, um, it's a well and a good idea. So, but as my side is doing different ways, so that is more dynamic systems account in a perspective. That is, a, we have, a, as I have explained, a top down at the bottom up interaction between the subjective mind and the objective world and a share the metric space. So, that is a one thing important, so that is the uh, environment and body things as uh, uh, analog space, metric space, and the neurodynamic system also is kind of a metric space. Metric space means that uh, there is kind of a force or length or, uh, yeah, those things, right? Um, okay, so then, so such kind of interaction, dense interaction, and compositionality is developed with the hierarchical organization and, and the neurodynamic system. That, that is something like as a primitive comes a lower level. The, the off, the primitive used often, appeared often as developed at a lower level. Higher level is kind of a dispatching or sequencing by um, generating intention to the lower level. So that's kind of thing. Generality in many different ways. I have shown that in these 25 years, I have shown many ways of different compositionality. And sometimes I do that like language behavior, compositionality, but anyway, using recurrent network and dynamic systems and compositionality can appear. So then, then so then the, the argument here is that also it looks like as if there were symbols to be manipulated in our brains, but uh, all we have are just time development of distributed dynamic system. So that is uh, something different from this view. So we don't have uh, actually like symbols uh, exactly, but what we have is self-organized compositional structure, but uh, that is different because it's embedded in the metric space. It's not arbitrary shape of the token like this one. It, it, it has a metric space. That's why we can have a, 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 a seamless interaction. So, but if we, we have a, like this one, it's okay. But however, whatever category you bring, this one and this one is living in a different metric space, therefore, interaction between is not smooth always, probably. 
But this one is, is uh, we have a metric space. Therefore, and then there is like a top-down strong force, like a precision. And then now is strongly pushing in the environments, uh, try to change the environment. But sometimes environment is strong. And, uh, and then we push back, subject mind push back. That's kind of pushing the frame. Those interactions are very important. Like uh, I'm grasping robot hands in dark the same way. And then inside the brain, pushing free always. So that is something necessary for situating our abstract mind of the higher level to, to the in, uh, actual environment and the body dynamics. That is my thinking. So, um, okay. So then, then uh, the next is that uh, possible account for phenomenological consciousness. So that is, uh, I have shown like this, uh, time diagram of a latent state is predicting, so predicting sensation. So no error, no error, now is no error, now no error. Then we got a uh, relatively large error. Then this error have to be minimized by back propagating the error through time with updating latent states for so as minimizing the error. This is such process as I told you. Then this is actually making a system as a conscious, phenomenal conscious. That is very effort for minimizing this error or free energies makes us conscious about the selves, ourselves as well as the world. That is something like a, if everything is becoming predictable, so that means, and everything goes smoothly, automatic. Then we we are not so much conscious about what we are doing. But in a, in a, at the time of the breakdown, that the error comes, then breakdown between the self predicted one and the actual reality. So then breakdown comes, the error generated. Then that's time, and then that error has to be minimized. And then that requires sometimes big search process. It's very effortful. That's why we conscious about the about that situation, or maybe conscious about self and as, as well as what those two are now independent, right? In it, it, it is predictable, it's kind of part of the world, it is kind of a coherent. Then we don't speed about, uh, we don't sense, we don't be so much conscious about it. Everything goes automatic without thinking everything goes, right? But it's getting some error and it have to be minimized and you got conscious about it. So that is, but some philosopher asked why effortful means conscious. That is true, I cannot answer. That is my intuition. Maybe still that's a hard problem I haven't solved. But I'm okay, so I'm. I, I am my. I think my intuition is uh, makes sense. So, and then also minimizing expected free energy, as I show you, go that front name. That is actually searching process of a uh, you know, uh, initial latent state. It should make us conscious in the same way. So difficult problem, is such process more effortful. We're gonna become more conscious, but it's more automatic. So that's kind of repeating same things of uh, everyday things. Then that's a less, it's more automatic and we are not so much conscious about it. So that is a things. And maybe, okay, so back to this uh, minimizing error and uh, this thing, that is kind of is, uh, corresponding to the what philosopher, phenomenologist like Heidegger talking about. So Heidegger saying good detail, uh, his story is that the carpenter is uh, hitting the nail. If everything goes uh, and everything goes rhythmically, he doesn't care anything about himself and uh, this nail or this hammer. But uh, if something is hitting and then um, the nails jump, jump off somewhere, then that's time you feel conscious about what happens to this hammer, what happens to me, so that is kind, kind of the, the gap generated, breakdown, then that makes conscious about 
self and uh, environment. So that very corresponds to the, what uh, uh, Heidegger talks about. So then summary, so, so today I talked about uh, first brief introduction, pre-recording and active inference framework uh, and, uh, and then introducing uh, our current network model. And uh, we showed like, two experiments. One is of a synchronous imitative interaction between two robots, and, and discussing the role of a uh, sense of the agency for organizing the different type of uh, interaction. And then uh, uh, in the next experiment was a goal direct planning based on active inference, focusing on the visual attention, visual working memory, and uh, ima some emergence of uh, something of permanency and self uh, sensor attenuation for self generated action. Finally, we discussed on uh, topics of the symbol grounding program, as well as a phenomenological consciousness. So that's uh, thank you very much. So these people are uh, collaborator and uh, colleague in my school and uh, yeah, so that's all the same. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Professor Tani.